Hi everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about what technical skills do we require for solution architects. OK, and here is the agenda. What are the different types of solution architects and when does a company need a solution architect and what does a solution architect do and what are the key focus areas for solution architects and what technical skills do we require for solution architect and how do we become a solution? How do we become solution architects? And finally, how do we deliver a solution architecture for enterprise grade Kubernetes? OK, so let's start with the first point. So what are the different types of solution architects? Generally, solution architect, there are so many specialist types in the solution architect role, and it's the same like engineering. We have a different specializations, and even in the medicine, we have a different specializations. Similarly, in solution architect also, so many specialists are available. Let's start with the first one is enterprise solution architect. And enterprise solution architect, Organize the main focus for the enterprise solution architect role is they will focus only on the organizational strategy and business architecture. And another level um, type of solution architect is normal solution architect role. So they focus on solution design and system integration. This is their main activities. And when it comes to another architect specialization is technical architect. They focus on the software's design and software development. OK, and another one is cloud architect. Nowadays, most of the jobs are on a cloud architect role. So they focus on cloud strategy and cloud migration. And another is architect evangelist, and they are focusing on advocate of the product and technical content, and it includes public speaking as well. And another one is infrastructure architect. They are focusing on infrastructure design and the software standardization, and it includes software patching as well. And another one is network arch architect. Their main focus on a networking devices. So they it includes the their responsibilities includes network design, strategy, and operational. And data architect, they are focusing on data engineering and anal analysis and data science and intelligence. And security architect, their main focus point is cyber, cyber security and compliances. And Last but not the least, DevOps architect. So this is also one of the most popular role these days. And the development and operations architect. Their key focus on automation, and it includes CI/CD pipeline, like uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment. Okay. So you can apply for any of the role. So based on your core skill set, let's say you have core skill set on public cloud, either AWS, Azure or Google Cloud. You can apply for a cloud architect. Suppose your core skill is networking. You can apply for a network architect. Suppose you are coming from a database or a data science background. You can apply for a data architect roles. And if you are coming from a security operations role, you can try for a security architect. And if you are come a separate, come, uh, if your core skill is application applications and application development, you can try for a DevOps architect role. OK, if you want to try for a commonly for solution architect, you can try for solution architect and the next level of solution architect is enterprise solution architect. They are uh, high level to the solution architect role. OK, so it depends on your core skill set and you can apply for the relevant roles. OK, now let's talk about when does a company need a solution architect? So there are some use cases. I'm just trying to give you a few scenarios. So when they are facing multiple risk, so there is a typo, sorry. So when they are facing a multiple risks, suppose they normally organizations may conduct a annual security audits. So during the audits, if they identified multiple vulnerabilities and all, they may look for a, they wanted to revisit their entire architecture and do the assessment. So that time we need a solution architect. 
okay this is one example and another scenario when unsure of which solution fit in the enterprise let's say you are planning to migrate your application architectures from the tier based to modern applications that is one scenario during that scenario which platform we need to choose and which is fit for our existing infrastructure if we are unsure that scenario also we can introduce a solution architect okay and another scenario when they are running a digital transformation task normally all the enterprises are moving to the digital transformations so as part of the digital transformation also we require a solution architect and last but not the least multiple teams are the part of the project let's say we have a server virtualization team server team virtualization team and also we have network team storage team backup team we also have security operations team we have a monitoring team or any of the other tools teams and all and also tech support if you when you have a multiple teams in your organization when you are going to start a new project normally we recommend for a project manager and also project along with project manager we also require a solution architect okay so this is the high level uh, main case use cases when when does the company need a solution architect okay now let's talk about what does solution architect do so the solution architect will be responsible for accessing current computer systems designing and developing a new technology solutions and integrating software and hardware to fit the existing enterprise environment in order to address the needs of an organization okay and sa SEA will be responsible for improving productivity and lower costs of management and streamlining the day-to-day -day activities for the business users and providing a secure, stable, supportive environment for the information technology team. Okay. In addition, SEA will need to understand how process operating systems and application architecture work together. Okay. In addition, there are some key tasks. Uh, what solution architecture do? Match the solution with business environment and meet stakeholders requirement and also account for project constraints and select the technology stack and also comply with the non-functional needs. So these are all the normal solution architecture roles. Okay, and also in addition, we need to understand what are the key focus areas for solution architect so how technology can be used to solve a given business problem and which framework platform or tech stack can be used to create a solution and how the application will look and what modules will be and how they interact with each other this is also one of the key area and how things will scale for future and how they will be maintained let's say when you plan for a capacity management and uh, if you want to decide the upcoming forecast we, we need, that is also one of the focus area for the solution architect and understanding and mitigating the risk in third party frameworks and platforms and finally finding a solution to a business problem in general when we have a conversations with customer either line of business or project leaders or any of the c level team most of the time first we can gather the requirement once we gather the requirement based on their requirement because when we have a engaged customer engagement each and every customer have their individual experiences and also that is depends on the customers industry also we have a multiple industries like we can use a government public sector mean government industries some customers are specifically for government and some customers are financial industries like banking sector so any kind of industry uh, customers when you approach and have a conversation definitely they will have, they will approach the solution architect or our pre-sales team or sales team they come up with yeah, some business problems so at the end of the day as a solution architect we need to gather all their issues and we need to come up with a solution that will be matched to the business requirements okay so that is a key focus area and in this scenario there will be a plenty of scenarios i will try to explain few scenarios in this session 
okay so now it's the time to talk about what technical skills do we require for solution architects so here i am going to give you a top skills and not only limited to this skills we can also have a some more additional skills but the top skills it involves the one key focus area is most of the organizations they focus mainly for a application or we can also call it as a workload and these workloads are all we can say it as a all workload workload is nothing but a, a piece of software or program can run on on premises or on a cloud environment so this workloads most of the time when we are designing a solution all key focal point key area is workloads only so based on the customer given workload requirement then only we can start preparing the solution architecture or solution designing so the central point is our all workload but the tech technical skill wise we should know aware of infrastructure skill so infrastructure means it includes the servers knowledge network knowledge and also the storage knowledge okay and in addition our it infrastructure is evaluated from traditional infrastructure to virtualization so nowadays every solution architect must have a knowledge on virtualization so virtualization technical skills also needed even virtualization also divided into multiple types like we have a server virtualization storage virtualization network virtualization application virtualization desktop virtualization so depends on your technical set you can just focus on the specific virtualization track okay and even as part of it infrastructure evaluation uh, our infrastructure already move to the virtualization track and even from virtualization nowadays we have a latest one is cloud based models even within the cloud based models we have a multiple clouds like a private cloud public cloud we can also have a hybrid cloud and now most as per the recent survey results even the organization 75% of organizations already started using a multi clouds also okay and along with this uh, main technical tracks even our application also definition is changed application architectures also enhancing from initially it's a monolithic monolithic to tier based now the latest is application virtualization move to the containerized based virtual, containerized based platforms so all applications are contain become as a containerized applications and it's running on a vm or it's running on a pods okay so this also skill also needed to become a solution architect and along with this at the end of the day we have to provide a data protection for all these areas so whether your workload is running on running on a containerization platform or your workload is running directly on bare metal or your workload is running on a virtual virtualization or virtual machine layer or your workload can be run on a cloud environment all these scenarios we have to provide a data protection that means either backup disaster recovery or business continuity plans so for this scenario also we should have a knowledge on data protection that means it includes backup as a service so along with this technical skills there are some common technical skills also needed for solution architects so that common technical skills are includes all these concepts like operating system normally operating systems we have windows linux solaris and so on this windows linux solaris and all we can run it on a bare metal we can run it on virtualization we can run it on a cloud environment that means it's a common for all the scenarios and similarly security even the security also one of the key point this security is like a data security or security is everyone's responsibility so same like uh, everyone's responsibility even in the it or infrastructure also security must be enabled on infrastructure layer that means bare metal and also the virtualization layer security cloud like where security even containerization based security so that is common for all these areas even data protection also providing a security they are come up with a data lock functionality and also data immutable functionality that all belongs to security concepts and even in the virtualization we have a nsx network security 
platform and automation also even automation also comes in very common for all the tracks so automation can be implemented on cloud level virtualization level infrastructure and other areas okay even the tools even in the when we want to become an architect we should have an idea on what are all the tools are using some organization they have a some set of tool set or we can use a, some third party tools these tools also it will cover all these areas and even reporting reporting also one of the important uh, thing and even reporting also available on all these areas and similarly monitoring even if you are belongs to the any of the technological area monitoring also plays a key role and even logging also important this is also plays a key role we should maintain the logs for all these areas so based on my experience i'm just giving you a high level overview when we have this skill set definitely we can become a solution architect but the specific technology you can choose depends on your core competency okay now let's elaborate this technical skill set what technical skills do we require for solution architect just now we talk about a six key elements so first one is infrastructure so within the infrastructure as i mentioned the main basic knowledge we needed is servers network and storage so i took the example of two servers hpe prolian server and hpe synergy frames so this any model you should be even before we are attending for any interview or any customer engagement we should have a knowledge on server models okay then only we can propose it based on the customer requirement we can propose it with with one server model for example hpe prolian dl 380 generation 10 server okay and network even we should have some knowledge on network equipments like aruba switches melnox switches or cisco switches cisco routers and so on and storage also we should have knowledge on even storage it's available on a different types of storages like file level storage block level storage or object storage but specifically for infrastructure layer we are focusing on a traditional storage concepts so even traditional storage concepts multiple pro protocols we can use fiber channel san iscsi san network attached storage san but within that the models wise i just give an example of hpe models hpe primera storage hpe nimble storage hpe three power storage okay suppose if you are coming from any other third party vendors like dell ibm fujitsu or any of your vendor you are working you should have those specific models you should be aware when we are presenting a solution design or solution when you are preparing a solution architecture to the customer okay and another technical technical track is virtualization and within the virtualization as i mentioned we have multiple virtualizations server virtualization network virtualization storage virtualization desktop virtualization and application virtualization normally server virtualization is most popular so normally vmware is the leading provider of server virtualization we can we, we are aware that we spear esxi 7 or latest version esx8 or v center 8 we can use and hyper v also available same like esx we have hyper v and same like v center we have a system center virtual machine manager from microsoft and nutanix also have same like esx we have acropolis hypervisor and prism central okay prism central also similar to the virtual center tool and network virtualization vmware have a previously nsxv and nsxt and the latest version is vmware nsx 4.0 and storage virtualization also we have a vmware virtual san and nutanix also introduced a storage virtualization concept that is hci hyper converged infrastructure and along with we have a software defined storages some third party vendors just for our easy understanding i given few examples cumulo cohesity cloudy and scality these all providing a object based storages to the customers and the desktop virtualization we have a vda virtual desktop infrastructure and the best example is vmware horizon or citrix zen desktop even application virtualization like thin app or citrix zen app we can use for a application virtualizations and so within this two uh, infrastructure and virtualization we minimally require a, some basic idea okay to become a solution architect and the cloud also we have a different models private cloud public cloud hybrid and multi cloud so private cloud we should have at least one private cloud knowledge like microsoft azure stack and aws outpost and even google anthos 
and even Nutanix also have a private cloud platform that is Nutanix Com, Nutanix Database as a Service, and VMware official private and public cloud, uh, hybrid cloud tool name is VMware Cloud Foundation. And the public cloud, we are already familiar with these three popular public clouds, AWS, Azure Cloud, and Google Cloud platforms. And hybrid cloud, normally hybrid cloud means mixed of private and public, like VMware have a multiple combination of hybrid clouds, like VMware Cloud on AWS, VMware Cloud on Azure, or VMware Cloud on Google, and so on. And even VC of also providing a functionality of hybrid cloud. And from Microsoft, we have a Microsoft Azure Arc. Okay, and when we have in our customer is having a multiple clouds in their environment, we should also aware that how we can manage multiple clouds. So multi-cloud management also one of the key concept. So there are two supporting uh, softwares. One is Morpheus and another one is VMware vRelease automation. But the latest tool, maybe it will be available soon, which is VMware ARIA automation. Okay, so this is the until the cloud concept. And similarly, another technical track is application modernization. So within the application modernization, we have a on premises and private level, we can use open source Kubernetes, but some customers they may go for a enterprise Kubernetes only. That is, enterprise grade Kubernetes platforms includes VMware vSphere with the Tanju, or we can use VCF on Tanju and Tanju on VCF, any, any way we can say, and Red Hat OpenShift, and we can also use Suzy Rancher, and public cloud perspective, we can use the default public cloud Kubernetes platforms. For Azure, we have AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service, and AWS, we have Elastic Kubernetes Service, and Google, we have a Google Kubernetes engine. And similarly, we can also have a data protection track so this data production can cover all these stubbers so data production we have plenty of uh, backup tools so but uh, as a solution not tech we should have an id on at least one data production tool okay for backup replication and disaster recovery purposes and i given few examples jeto comvault veeam Cohesity, Rubrics, Skeleti, Net Backup, Networker, and VMware SRM, Site Recovery Manager. But our key uh, key focus area within the data production is backup, business continuity, and disaster recovery. All this should be covered with these tools. So you, we should have idea on any one of the tool. Suppose if you are working on any other data protection tool, later you can just uh, uh, write it in our comment section, okay? So that everyone can aware. And another track that is common track for all these environments that is operating system and security automation tools, reporting, monitoring, and logging. So normally operating systems, uh, I just assign as a three popular operating systems, Windows, Red Hat Enterprise, Linux, and Solaris. And when it comes to the security, it's normally security is available on all these areas. And automation and tools, I just given few examples, DevOps, Dev security apps, and we realize orchestrator and we realize automation. And similarly, reporting also can be available for all these tracks. And another point is monitoring and logging. Normally, monitoring and logging, we can go for a we realize login site for logging. And for the monitoring, we may use network perspective. We can may use we realize network insight. And another one is we realize operations manager for monitoring. Not only these tools, we can also use any of the other third party tools like we can use solar winds, WhatsApp gold, NIMSoft. This is all supported for a monitoring as well. Okay, so hope you got an idea what technical skills do we require for solution architecture. But uh, what I recommend is within this all these uh, technical skills, we should have basic idea on all these skills, but for the strong I recommend core competency or core skills. We should have minimally two core skills. Suppose if you are coming from application background, uh, with the along with application background, you should also learn DevOps. Suppose if you are coming from a data protection background, along with the data protection, you should strong about any of the one public cloud. Or similarly, if you are coming from a Kubernetes background, we should learn at least one strong skill. Then we are suitable for the solution architect role. Okay, that point I will cover again in the following slide. So how do we become solution architects? So generally, 
there is no single path to become solution architect. So this solution architects can come from a many different backgrounds. Okay, because even solution architect just now we discussed with there are different type of solution architects. Okay, and we should have minimally two core skills and the basic knowledge on the following tracks. So basic knowledge on whatever we discussed now infrastructure, virtualization, cloud, application modernization, data protection, operating system, security automation and tools. So minimally we should have knowledge on all these tools and we should have a strong knowledge on two core skills. Okay, if your already core skill is virtualization, better to learn any one core skill. Suppose if your core skill is application mod applications and developer, you can focus on at least another core skill, one strong additional one strong skill and basic knowledge of all the skills that will be more than enough to become a solution architect based on my experience. Okay, and another one, how do we deliver a solution architecture for enterprise grade Kubernetes? So here I am giving you one example to understand whatever the concepts and technical skills we discussed until now, that one will match with this example. Okay, so how we deliver the solution architecture for enterprise grade Kubernetes? Just now we talk about enterprise grade Kubernetes have a multiple Kubernetes platforms. So within that one, I'm taking an example of Red Hat OpenShift. So even if you take Red Hat OpenShift or Suzy Rancher, we need a infrastructure, physical infrastructure. So I'm taking the example of HPE Synergy, three frame setup. We have frame one, frame two and frame three. If you see in this diagram, I just mentioned as frame one have three compute nodes and remaining all are the empty. And even frame two also have a three compute node remaining all are empty. Frame three also have a three nodes. But why the other slots are empty means it may be used for our future plan. If in future, let's say we are starting with a pilot test, you are starting with a testing and development, we may go with only the nine nodes. Maybe in future, if you want to go for a production, that time we can place the remaining compute nodes. Okay, that plan we should decide three years in advance or five years in advance. Okay, so that is the reason we place the our solution as a three synergy three frame setup. And on top of that, we need to plan for within this uh, nine compute node, we need to install a virtualization software. Suppose in a VMware, we say it as VMware ESXi must be installed. Similarly, Red Hat virtualization host, and we make it as a cluster for three nodes. And three HPE Synergy frame is model is 480 generation 10 compute modules. Let's say in the boot term, we, I took the three nodes dedicatedly for a Red Hat virtualization host cluster. And how about we have a three, six nodes. This six nodes we can dedicate it for a worker nodes. So Red Hat OpenShift physical worker nodes and this is also six HPE 480 generation 10 computer modules. So this now all the nine nodes are completely utilized. Three become as a virtualized host and six become as a physical compute modules. Now we have to configure the OpenShift. So when you configure a Red Hat OpenShift virtual machine nodes on the Red Hat Enterprise Linux platform, now it will prepare you as a three master virtual nodes and also three infrastructure nodes and it is also consist of at configuration all the configuration and when we have a multiple master nodes and infra nodes and compute module it will also require a load balancing mechanism so we will also introduce the one solution load balancer we can say ha proxy we need to create a ha proxy vm as well and let's say as per our physical infrastructure, we prepared with a virtualization and we prepared with a worker nodes and we also use Kubernetes platform. We also use networking platform that is load balance. See within this solution architecture, multiple tracks are covered. And how about the data protection? Even we need to include data protection. So data, archival data will be go to the HPE store ones and main data will be in a HP3, local data will be on HPE three part store sub. And we are using one backup tool is a HP recovery manager central. So either you can use HP one or you can use any of the other third party solution like Commvault, Kuhicity, Robric and so on. Or you can use a HPE Z01. Okay, I given one example only. This is and all just to give you a clear picture how we can prepare your architecture design.
okay and and finally how we can centrally manage we can manage to red hat open shift container platform portal and it is mainly the back end is sysdic cloud native intelligence platform agent using that agent we can access entire architecture okay so this is the example of how we can deliver a solution architecture for enterprise grade Kubernetes platforms. Suppose he in this uh, diagram, I am explaining about Red Hat OpenShift. Say, let's say some customer they specifically ask for their environment is running with VMware. They want to need a VMware vSphere with Tanju. So that time the infrastructure is still same. Instead of Red Hat virtualization, we are using vSphere virtualization. Instead of Red Hat OpenShift virtual nodes, we are using a vSphere with Tanju. So that means Tanju master nodes, Tanju worker nodes, we can configure and load balancer also either we can use HA proxy or we can use NSX AV load balancer or we can use a NSX T or latest VMware NSX that flexibility is available. Even data protection solution if the customer is using any existing backup tool like Commvault or Veeam we can use same backup tool. So within our architecture we need to include that point also. Suppose other customer they are more interested on a Suzy Suzy Linux their platforms are running on Suzy Linux they want to go for a Suzy Rancher container platform. So when we plan for a rancher means the architecture infrastructure is same, but we are just changing the Red Hat OpenShift replace with your rancher. So this is how we can provide a plenty of architecture solution and we can tailored our architectural designs. It's subjected to be customer's choice and also the business requirements. OK, hope you got an idea. OK, that's it for today. If you are watching this video first time, please do view, like, share, and subscribe to Gnan Cloud Garage channel. And if you are already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.